Hi everyone and welcome to Chapter 9 of Headfirst JavaScript Programming. This is the companion video for Chapter 9 and it's in this chapter where we really start to look at how most JavaScript programs are written. And by that I mean that most JavaScript programs are filled with code that reacts to events. Now you saw a couple of events in Chapter 8 in the Battleship game. There, we needed to handle a button click event and a key press event, along with the page load event. But we've kind of been glossing over how events really work up to now. So Chapter 9 is really where we delve into what events are, how they work, and some of the different kinds of events you're going to encounter in your JavaScript coding. So the first thing we do in this chapter is go back through how an event gets generated and how to handle the event in your code. This will look familiar to you, but you're going to see a lot more detail about how events work as you go through the chapter. Now, the thing to note about events is that a lot of the time, when you write JavaScript code, that code is all about responding to events. That's the case whether you're writing code for the browser, like we're doing in this book, or whether you're writing JavaScript code in another context, like Node.js, for instance. Node.js is just a system that lets you run JavaScript on the server. And the reason this is the case is because for your application to be interactive, your code needs to respond to what's happening in the environment in which it's running. And in the browser, there's always a lot going on. Mouse clicks, key presses, page loads, and a lot more. All of these are events that your code can respond to. The other big thing you need to know about events is that they happen asynchronously. That just means that you usually can't predict when an event will occur, or how many times, or in what order the events will happen. So as you work through this chapter, keep that idea in mind. Events can happen at any time. And we structure event handlers specifically so they can be executed anytime without having to know in advance when. So next, we start building an image game so that you can get a lot more practice handling events. The first version of the game is pretty simple, but we're going to ask you to pay attention to how the code is designed specifically around events. Our old friends Jim, Joe, Judy, and Frank are going to visit with us again in this chapter as they try to work through designing the game with us. One of the first things they have to figure out is how to add the same event handler to multiple events. This can save you from repeating code, but then it raises the question, if we're using the same handler for events on multiple objects, how do we know which element was the one that generated the event? So we work through that, and of course, along the way, you get to practice with exercises like this one, where you have to find coordinates on a treasure map before the pirates get too angry. We finish the first version of the image game up, and then we have an in-depth interview with the browser talking about events. One of the questions that gets discussed here is how the browser handles lots of events happening in a short period of time. You'll also learn another really important thing about events in the browser, and that is that the browser can only execute one event handler at a time. So definitely pay close attention to this interview because there's a lot of great information here. After that, we move on to a different kind of event, a timer event. All the events we've used so far are DOM events, that is, events that happen to elements in the DOM. But those aren't the only kinds of events you'll find, and timer events are a good example of a different kind of event. We end up using a timer event to add a nice feature to the image game, which ends the chapter, except for another code lab. Here, you'll experiment with some weird-looking functions, just to get you excited about Chapter 10, of course. And then we finish up with some delicious event soup and, of course, the crossword puzzle. After you finish this chapter, it might be a good idea to look at the other code you've written so far in this book and think about how a lot of the small bits of code we've written have been quite linear, basically executing from the top down. Take another look at Battleship and see how that was structured differently. Once the game was set up, the rest of the application was set up to respond to events. And that's what most of your web apps are going to look like. 
Events are a huge part of JavaScript programming, and this chapter will explain the event code we've written before and get you well on your way to writing more interactive web applications.